For more than 20 years, CTV has captured the moments that matter in our community. From our studios in St. Clair, you're watching Focus with Paul Dingaman. Hi there, welcome back to the Focus program. Paul Dingaman here, nice to see you. We've got a great show lined up for you. Lots of friends are coming along, and I say that <coughs> specifically because Deb Johnson's here. She's a friend, and she's here to talk about friends. Right. Did I get that right? You sure did, because we're going to talk about the power of friendship. Okay. And, uh, and August 5th is uh, National Friendship Day. It's coming up shortly. And uh, friends are very important um, for a lot of different reasons. Friends can help us. Um, they're good for your physical and your mental health. Yep. So that's why I like to talk about it, I guess. Um, but, you know, some of the things that friends can do is uh, they help us celebrate the good times. Yep. They're there to support us in the bad times. Yep. Um, they can help uh, prevent loneliness. They can help increase our sense of belonging. And when um, you need a hug, you need a friend. Right. You need a friend. You can't go just walking up to a stranger for a hug. Well, you can. You but... can, but that might not, that might have some bad consequences for right, you. Right. So, um, so yeah. So, you know, another, another great thing friends are good for is um, when you either, sometimes friends will help prevent you from doing something you shouldn't do. Right. Um, engaging in either bad habits or bad behaviors, things like that. They can also help support you, like when you're trying to make lifestyle changes like perhaps exercise. Um, I like to talk about having a workout buddy. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. Workout buddies kind of hold you accountable and say, you know, we're meeting at the gym tomorrow or we're going to mm -hmm. run tomorrow. And I always do better when I have a specific workout buddy. I need to get one again right now. Um, but, um, but anyways, I have a lot of different ones, I guess. But anyways, um, yeah, so there's a lot, of, a lot of really great things that friends help us with. And as we get older, we tend to not... Um, you know, spend as much time or focus on our friendships because we have other, sometimes other priorities, whether it's when you're maybe a younger adult and you have young children to raise, so that's the fo your focus. Um, you get, as you get older, you might be taking care of your aging parents or things like that. Right. So you don't have time maybe to make new friends or to do as much with your friends. And sometimes you move. I think the average adult moves, I don't know, 13 or 15 times in their lifetime. So you might need to make new friends. So. Um, so the, I, guess, I guess the point of the discussion is, is to try to spend some time to uh, make friends, to uh, maintain, even maybe seek out a, long, a friend you haven't been in touch with for a while. But w another point I guess I want to make about it is when you have a mental illness or an intellectual or developmental disability, some, it can be significantly harder to either make or retain friends. Um, oftentimes people with mental illness find it hard to... Uh, um, interact certain social situations can be stressful mm -hmm. um, things like that and so sometimes um, you know people say well what should I do I have a friend that has a mental illness um, you know what should I how should I handle that and sometimes some people don't even ask that question they just shy away and say "Ooh, I don't want to be involved anymore we hope that people don't take that position and we hope that if you have a friend that has a mental health issue that you stay and support them that you um, you know, don't stop asking them to do things even if they say no repeatedly because depending on what their mental health issue is, if, they, if it's depression, they might not want to leave the house. Don't give up. Can, can people call you if they've got that question at St. Clair County Community Mental Health and say, gee, I don't know how to handle this. How do I? Yeah, they can. Um, and if the, they can call us and, uh, um, and we'd be happy to give um, tips or advice on that. Um, we also have... Um, speakers too, like sometimes um, we mm. have, we send people into schools, into Rotary, mm -hmm. um, into ser other service organizations. So we can talk about a lot of different topics and that could be one of them. Yeah. And another tip I would give on that is um, take some time to learn about the person's mental illness because sometimes people are sort of frightened because they don't really understand what it is or know anything about it. So take some time to understand, to educate yourself um, and to... Uh, to be there to support your friend. I mean, if your friend was diagnosed with cancer, you wouldn't run away. No, no, you'd that's be, right. You'd, want, you'd reach out. You'd say, what can, I, what can I do to Good help point. you? Right. Um, and then you would do that. And sometimes, whether you have a serious physical illness or a serious physical mental health issue, you might want, you know, sometimes you want space. So a person needs their, their space. Sometimes you need friends, support, things like that. And so it, a, a real friend would, would ask that question and, um, and, and hopefully come through and, and be supportive. Right. So... What else you got there? Well, besides being a friend, um, I, I just when I w when we were looking up this uh, stuff related to friendship and friend, you know, we always we always check each month what's this month and you know yeah. so 
um, August is all about friendships and things like that. But um, some of the things um, specific, there's a, a couple other things. Like the first week of August is National Simplify Your Life Week. <laughs> I thought that was That's good. a great one, yeah. And maybe that maybe that's why I forgot my phone today. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot um, quieter. You're getting more done because you don't have the phone. It is. Um, and uh, week two is National Smile Week. And uh, I don't know how people come up with these things because really, you you know, you should smile all the time, right? Right. Uh, or try to smile often. Um, that was the Dental Society came up with the National Smile Week. Right. Turn the frown upside down. <laughs> uh, National Smile Week. Get your teeth fixed if they don't look good. I don't know. <laughs> um, and uh, but week three is Friendship Week. Okay. Um, it should be Friendship Week or Friendship Time all year long, I think. All right. But, um, but maybe during that week, reach out to somebody, whether yeah. you do it through uh, social media, you know, a text, an email, um, a phone call, right. um, a knock on the door the old-fashioned way, a yeah. letter in the mail the old-fashioned way. You know, there's a lot of ways to get in touch with people and, um, oh. and maybe make a little special effort that week. That's right. um, and uh, I love week four, Be Kind to Humankind Week. Ooh. Be nice if people were kind all the time, right? But, um, but maybe make an extra effort that week. Um, so. So there's those things, um, you know, related to the month of August. And then we have some other things to talk okay. about. Um, one is um, we have Kevin Hines um, coming back or coming to Port Huron actually for the first time. Kevin, we just actually showed the rip, it was called Suicide, the Ripple Effect. It was a documentary at the Birchwood um, Theater right. on July 25th. And it's a documentary about Kevin Hines' life. And Kevin Hines, when he was a very young man, um, tried to die by suicide by jumping off the Golden Gate Bridge, and he is one of only 20 people in history that survived that jump. Um, and so now he lives to tell about it and hopefully share his message of hope and recovery um, for others and you know, to t say that there, there are a lot of other options out there. Right. Um, and so um, unfortunately, I was not able to see the documentary, but I heard it was very powerful. But Kevin Hines himself will be here September 11th. Um, there's going to be two talks, one in the afternoon that has um, continuing ed credits attached to it at 3 o'clock, and then one in the evening. Um, and they will be at, um, oh, I think what the evening one is going to be, I think at the um, MOC building um, in Port Huron, the mm -hmm. city um, building. City office a, building. Yeah, there's Municipal a, office building. It, what is it? Yeah. Yeah, municipal, thank you. <laughs> um, so anyways, in that auditorium. and that, But the daytime one is going to be at Port Huron High School in oh, their okay. Performing Arts Center. Okay. Um, and if people want more information about that, you can call our office um, at 985-8900 uh, and ask about that presentation, and okay. we can make sure. Is there any charge to that? No, it's free. Oh, okay, good. It's good. free. Um, so there's that coming up. And then um, we have an art show. We have it every year at Studio 1219. Um, the kickoff event um, with a public reception will be on Tuesday, September 4th, starting at 4 o'clock till 6. There'll be some light refreshments. Um, and I, I have mentioned this on um, previous episodes, but our, our art program is one of our anti-stigma initiatives. It's an attempt to show people, show, show the community, um, that the people we provide services, and also show the people that, they, that they're multifaceted individuals, they're talented, um, and we want people to see people for all the things that they are, not their mental illness or their, right. but, but you know, they're an artist, they're a writer, we have a writing program, they're an actor, we have an acting program. Um, and so, um, so that's one of the programs. And we have some very talented people um, that- uh, And don't you feature some of their uh, work on billboards and stuff? And well, then, the billboard is, is really our, our high school winner- well, that's the high school, of, okay. of the poster contest, but that was kind but of- But your boring. artwork is featured all around the place. Yes, um, we have it in all of our buildings um, and then it will be on display at the art show, of course. Some is for sale, some is not. Um, right. And uh, so that that's right. happening. And uh, oh, I feel like I'm forgetting one thing. But I well, let me tell people while you're thinking of that before All you right. leave. A reminder that this coming Tuesday <coughs> is election day in uh, the St. Clair County. There are lots of uh, ballot. There's only three ballot issues, and when you check, you can only vote uh, for the Republican Party or the Democratic Party, or the Independents. Uh, on this ballot, but everybody can vote for the uh, three proposals. One is for the Council on Aging, and the other two are for uh, St. Clair County Community College. So uh, those are that's coming up this Tuesday, and it's important, so make sure that you get out and vote. And then for our uh, people who travel uh, Range Road, uh, I'm going to read this from uh, the City of St. Clair. Uh, please be advised that the Range Kearney Brown intersection will be closed for construction beginning the week of August the 6th. It's 
anticipate of the project will take approximately four, count them, four weeks to complete. Traveling, uh, traffic traveling southbound on range, and there's a lot of traffic every day, will be detoured from Davis Road East to M29, south to, uh, M to Clinton Avenue, west on Clinton Avenue, back to Fred Moore, and west on Fred Moore uh, to Kearney. So uh, then the coming north, uh, be the same way, traveling northbound on Kearney and eastbound on Fred Moore, detoured on Fred Moore to Clinton and east on Clinton to M29 and then north on M29 to Davis and back to Range Road. That's, uh, they're gonna, that road, that intersection is in terrible, terrible shape. Uh, I don't know if you can zoom in tight enough on that picture, but uh, here you go. Has he got it? Here he comes. He's coming right now. And let's see. There. No? There we go. Okay, you can see the yellow line. That's the the detour. The intersection is right here at Brown and uh, Kearney, and there's tremendous amount of traffic. So that'll be uh, it's it's pretty well broken up that corner. So uh, it needs repair, and they're going to start it this coming Monday, August the sixth, for about four weeks. What was your thought? It was about mental health first aid training. Okay. I'm so glad I remembered. Actually, when I shut my folder, um, I had a little <laughs> note about it. So uh, mental health first aid training, remember, teaches people how to identify, understand, respond to signs of mental illness and substance use disorders. It gives people the skills that they need to um, provide initial support um, to somebody who might be experiencing a mental health issue. Um, it's not to teach you to be a therapist in eight hours. Right, right. Um, but it's an eight-hour training. It's a free training. Um, and we have a, an adult and a child version. The child version is, hmm. is happening. There will be more in the future, but um, uh, one of them will be after, or is before this airs. But the other one is, is an adult, for if you're working with adults. Um, and it doesn't mean it could be anybody in the community. Anybody can come to these trainings. We encourage anybody, everybody. It's for the lay folks out in the community. Right. It's not for, um, you know, MSWs. Uh, it's not for social workers and yeah. that kind of stuff. But anyways, um, so that class is August 10th. Starts at 8 a.m. It's at Community Mental Health in Port Huron. And if people are interested, they can call Tammy Lake at 966-2597 to register. Okay. And we have about uh, about 10 or 15 more slots available. Great. So that was it. Thank Happy you. Happy Friend Month. Happy Friend Month to you, my good friend, Paul Diamond. <laughs> good to see you. You too. We are going to be back with uh, Jason Steyer and some ladies from Marine City talking about art and about pianos and all sorts of great things that are happening is in the community by, uh, around the word art. We'll be right back. And we're back. Welcome to see you. Nice to see you back. We are here with uh, three fine people that like art. And uh, one guy that's uh, been on this TV show a lot is Mr. Jason Steyer, and he's going to start us out and tell us what's Welcome. going on. President of the St. Clair Art Association, Jason Steyer, Welcome back to the nice Focus spot. Set. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. Um, what's happening? You've got uh, two fine ladies here going to talk to us about some projects they got going. But Indeed. Give me a, a background here. Well, there's a lot going on. And there's always so much happening in our community and throughout our region uh, with the arts and with our community uh, that we felt it necessary to bring together one group, one platform for all those people to come together and oh, know, okay. know what's happening. Uh, so that we can truly tap into the resources and the talents in our community when it comes to art uh, and give everybody the opportunity to make our community vibrant and just, just in, as incredible as it is. And that's why you came up with Artful Allies? Yeah, yeah. So Artful Allies was actually the brainchild of uh, myself and a, a dear friend from high school uh, by the name of Laura Denault uh, Collins. And uh, she's an artist herself. Uh, she works up in the Croslex area. She teaches art classes out of her home. Uh, she actually has her own exhibit coming up uh, this month at the Exquisite Corpse Coffee Shop in Port Huron. Um, and we're always talking about what's happening uh, throughout the area and how, oh, we heard about it too late or uh, we didn't know what was going on or where the opportunities were. Uh, so we came up with the idea of creating this artful ally so that we could bring all the art organizations, all the individual artists, all our businesses, um, all our community advocates together uh, to truly, you know, capitalize on the potential of our community and make those artistic things happen. I like the idea. Uh, the theater people have tried to do that uh, unsuccessfully for a number of years because uh, you've got theater from uh, uh, the Barn Theater up in, in sure. the, the, the Sandusky or up near there, right? Uh, all the way down to uh, Algonac. Yeah. And again, they've got plays going all the time, and, and they needed some kind of 
coordination, but it was right. never it was never able to pull together. So and you're the same has been true with the visual arts. So right. you know, this is our attempt to, to bring all those those people, individuals, and groups together. Um, and, and really, I mean, this region is so rich in creativity and collaboration. Uh, we're just trying to bridge those gaps and, and create that network okay. uh, of artists and, and groups. Okay. Uh, come along with you today is Cheryl Devereaux, who's been on with us many times yes. uh, from uh, Marine City, from uh, uh, the tax business. Yes. Uh, where's her, her other hat? Yeah, that's and, one of them. And then you are acting as the uh, marketing arm for a group called AMMA, which is uh, Artisans Mixed Media Arts. Big Correct. long title. Yeah. And the art coordinator for that is uh, Mari. I got it right? Yes. Maury uh, Lane Sutton, welcome to the Focus Show. Thank you, What Paul. have you two got going on? How does it you know, fit in with what uh, Jason's doing? Well, it fits in very well because it we had the same ideas. Um, Mari and I got together a couple months ago and we're throwing around ideas on how to be more involved in the community. And one of the thoughts was to become a part of whatever is already going on in town instead of you know starting out from scratch um so when like for example in september there's going to be comic-con right. we'll have comic-con artists oh okay um, okay maritime days this weekend we're going to have artists coming down um setting up for maritime days in okay. marine city so all of this um we have several different things such as roasted with perks um the second Sunday of the month um, is a featured artist, but every day they feature different artists. They have art on the walls, um, things for sale that if you go into Roasted, um, you can view and purchase items. And also there's a meeting um, the last Tuesday of the month at Marine City Library. Every. Month. Right. So okay. all the all the um, artists can get together, and whether it be you know art, music, whatever venue you're in, we want to. My job is to kind of work together with all of them um, to be part of the community, and with you know the theaters, like you said. Um, it's a good crowd for art, and I think Marine City and St. Clair are good venues for it. Right. So that's what I'm trying Saint to do. St. Clair Art Association is how old? Older than me. <laughs> <laughs> Much older than me. And again, they're, they're so well established that it seemed like the great um, ground zero for this, uh, this movement to, to bring all those groups together. Uh, you know, we're no You're not fighting each other. We're not you're fighting each other at all. No, mm -hmm. it's all about creating those uh, collective uh, endeavors where we can strengthen our community. I'm going to put this down for a minute, and uh, Jared is going to throw up some pictures that, that are probably in, in Roasted, and you can tell us what, what they are. And, okay. and uh, yes. if they'll throw up some of those pictures on the back here, back here. We'll, get, uh, we'll get started. There we go. So this is the kind of, of art that is on display? There's uh, different types of art displayed because we have different artists displayed on the wall there. This is a, um, the first one was a gentleman, uh, Al. Grigowski, and this one here is uh, happens to be one of mine. Uh, Beautiful. It's acrylic. We also have uh, Deborah with Deborah's creative uh, concepts doing children's art on Sundays, uh, second Sundays at between two and four. And and, the lighthouse. Uh, That's the great. The lighthouse. One of our local artists, um, Burl. She's uh, she's a phenomenal painter. She'll have quite a few up here. And uh, this is a group of the um, artisans that got together for the Artful Allies at the St. Clair one of the few. Go back to that picture for a minute, because that's one of the few times in history that you'll see Jason Steyer with a tie. Uh, well, you see a lot more often. <laughs> <laughs> okay, go ahead. And that yes. is our, um, our sign for Artful Allies. And, it's a great, uh, great logo. And it's a collaboration. For, okay, well, let's hold, hold that one there for a minute. We'll get back okay. to Jason on that, that picture in a second. Okay. But... Uh, so you guys have got uh, at Comic Con. You're going to have uh, some art, art on display. Have mm -hmm. you got any fundraisers coming up, or any other projects coming up? Well, we actually don't do fundraising. Okay. We actually uh, network with the businesses uh, that work with the artists to bring art um, to to businesses. So are you looking for more businesses? We're looking for more businesses to support um, 
our artists and what we do in collaboration with uh, with the business is we let everyone know where our artwork is displayed at and if we have an opportunity to do a uh, small um, meet the artist uh, to invite our, our friends and family and advertise that we're there. Uh, we keep our work there for a month or however long that they'd like to have it there. And uh, if it's for sale, 100% goes back to the artist. Oh, okay, in, great. Uh, in that's, uh, networking. That's pretty unique. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Cheryl, we, you, we have a new business opening in Marine City too, Marine City, um, MC Marketplace. Okay. And we talked to Jessica today. Um, she's opening um, August 16th. Mm -hmm. But the reason I mention it is because her building is going to host a lot of um, artists. They're going to be running a portion of the building. Is that the new modern wood, wood building? No. Oh. No, this is where the old Miller building. Okay. And in the middle of the street. Yeah, it's middle of the block. It's mm -hmm. going to be set up really neat. She's going to be have an area where there could be classes held, and um, she's got some really neat ideas. And many of the artists will be able to, you know, have another venue to sell their art. Great. Okay. Have we missed anything on that? No, I think we covered all that. Okay. Well, then let's move We're, back. To, mm -hmm. Go ahead. I was just going to mention um, that Emma uh, was invited to do Art in the Park with Music in the Park um, through uh, Marine City in the, in the Maritime Days. And uh, we did that every Friday night through the summer. And uh, so those artists that participated uh, were also invited at no cost uh, to set up at the Mar Maritime uh, Days Festival. Uh, for the weekend, so Friday, Saturday, and Sunday this weekend, um, first weekend in August. And uh, we'd appreciate um, people stopping out and see what uh, AMA has to offer in a group okay. of artisans. Mm -hmm. uh, you have a Facebook page. Yes. And if the fellows will throw that up, mm -hmm. uh, we'll take a look at that. And what's the address of that Facebook page? Um, either AMMA or Artisans Mixed Media Arts. Okay, all right. There it is. It's up on the on the web now, mm -hmm. uh, on the, the screen now. So the people can go to there for more information from you guys and see different events. And they can also post. Uh, they'll see the different artists that have um, coordinated their work with AMA, and they'll have a, um, an album. So if they're particular about one artist or another, they can go in and contact them directly to purchase their work. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Well, let's go back to the aforementioned Mr. Jason Steyer, and we've got a band up here on the back the back screen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a teaser for what? That's a teaser for, you had mentioned fundraisers. Um, the St. Clair Art Association does rely on fundraisers. We're a group run completely by volunteers. Uh, so throughout the year, we rely on the art fair uh, to generate the funds to uh, st stay in business, to right. have the sales gallery right. open, the classes running, the public art projects that are all around town. Uh, we're going to try a new one this fall, September 8th, Saturday, September 8th, from 6.30 until 11 o'clock at night. We're going to do something called a pop-up gala. Okay. Uh, so what a pop-up gala is, is you can purchase a ticket uh, at stclairart.org or on our Facebook page. Um, and you're going to show up to the Riverview Plaza uh, Saturday, September 8th, and you're going to bring the party with you. Okay, so here's the party. <clears throat> here's, the, here's the party. So this is uh, in, out in New Jersey. Uh, one that, the, that they've done for several years, uh, and we're going to bring it to our community. So we expect everyone to bring their own table, chairs, place settings, food, uh, beverages. It's like a picnic. It's outside. like it's like a picnic, but, uh, but the, a grown up. The picnic. theme is casual elegance. Uh, okay. So the theme this year is black and white. So we expect everybody to drink, to drink, to drink, <laughs> and to dress uh, in either all white, all black, or a combination of the two. Uh, and get as creative as you can with the table that you bring I like and, and the group that you bring with That's you. That's wonderful. So we're going to set up in the in the beautiful courtyard that we have in the yeah, center of the plaza. Really is. Uh, and we're just going to enjoy the, uh, the the Blue Water Kings that you saw earlier there. Mm -hmm. It's the 13-piece band that's going to come out and entertain. Where are they out of? Um, they, they, they perform all over the Great Lakes region. Uh, and they're going to come here to St. Clair and they're going to just light up the night. And all the proceeds, the tickets are $35 a piece. Uh, that's for entertainment. We're going to have a champagne toast to the arts, and all of the proceeds are going to go right back to the St. Clair Art Association to support everything we do uh, throughout the year. Beautiful, beautiful. Have we missed anything, ladies? Um, and I would encourage membership to the St. Clair Art Association. Right. Okay. And then I think you were going to mention about the pianos. 
Oh, oh yeah, <laughs> sure. So. Uh, oh yeah, we got to put the pictures of the piano. Yeah, thanks to Paul, we have our uh, I think our next public art project, and uh, you may have seen it in other parts of the country, but. Uh, you'll be walking along the streets, and all of a sudden, you'll discover a an artistic, uh, creative piano. Throw that up uh, on just the just for people on the to air. come and gather around, and to you know add another layer of uh, vibrancy to our community uh, through music and art combined. Uh, so currently, we're looking for those pianos that you're looking to get out of your basement or your your living room. Uh, we do have a couple that are ready to go and ready to be transformed. Uh, so again, through Artful Allies, we'll be recruiting artists to transform these pianos, and we're looking for locations so to you're support gonna, them. So you're going to put them outside. I, I originally saw this in Denver, Colorado, on a yeah, sure. street that's called 16th Street. Right, right. And uh, this was two or three, four years ago, and there was a, a brown piano sitting there, a, a, stand, or a, a piano like this. And uh, people would just walk by, and they'd sit down and play. It right. was great. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, you know, there they get as much snow as we do. Sure. And that piano stayed outside all the time. Yeah, and we can do that. We can just let them live their lives and then right. <laughs> see and what happens. Them. Or we can look for places that are covered. Riverview Plaza would be an ideal location. Yeah. Green uh, City's uh, probably got pavilions. So we're, we're open mm -hmm. to suggestions. Okay. And uh, so then uh, subsequent to that, a few weeks ago, I saw a report on CBS Sunday, or Sunday morning CBS News yeah. pro program there where they had a three or four minute segment on these pianos. And so I sent it to you and the rest is history. That's right, say. that's right. So, so watch for that. It's just a good project. Love Absolutely. the project. project. Ladies, did we miss anything? We want everybody to get used to this Artful Allies. Uh, yep, look it up logo. on Facebook, follow along, and you'll see everything that's happening. Good. Cheryl, always a pleasure Thank to you, see Paul. you. Nice to have met you. Thank you, Paul. Jason, nice always a you, pleasure. Paul. And uh, coming up next, we've got uh, a man by the name of Alexander Zanchek. He's going to uh, join us from uh, Neiman's Family Market, where he did an interview with Pat O'Connor from the St. Clair Chamber uh, about the upcoming uh, St. Clair Jazz Festival, uh, which is coming up August the 18th in Palmer Park. Uh, fun guy, fun interview. We normally don't take our interviews from at the market and run them in focus, but I think you'll enjoy this one. Let's take a look. Welcome back. Well, we've got a really unusual guest for St. Clair today, this very tall, stylish man standing next to me is Alexander Zanchek. <laughs> and <laughs> I've never done a show with a watermelon. And what I don't know unusual? why we I don't know why we have a watermelon. You said we have here, an but... unusual guest. What is, what is that? <laughs> it's not the watermelon. Um, I'm lucky enough to have had many, many conversations with you and so I've heard lots and lots of really right, funny you don't need stories. Any, any show prep. Um, you're, you're, uh, yeah, I know. Loaded. I know stuff and uh, and it's been my pleasure of course to work with you for the last three years because you approached us and you said, I just love St. Clair. I want to do a Is concert. That That's exactly how it happened. And then someone said, Pat, you want to be on the committee? And I said, yeah. And so now you and I are putting on a, a big old uh, jazz fest. And we, it's a big old jazz fest. Big old right. jazz fest. But I also and approached you and I said, can we please do a jazz festival so that one day I can do a television store and a grocery store? <laughs> and I, I said, wanna, Sooner than later, of course you here, can. Who am I, what am I, this is going to go into my bio. And I said, where else in the world could I be hosting a show, know, know. me be hosting a show, this. and have this you cool, as though. my guest? This is cool, though. It is cool. So Normally there are, no, there are no snacks in the green room. Look at this. There's any snacks you want here, so anyway, Alexander. Let's talk about the big old jazz the festival. The big old jazz and festival. Right, I'm, I'm, that's sort of how it happened. Well, the idea kind of floated around. I did it real fast. I know the idea floated around. There was a, a, a young man who lives in Marine City, who works for me, Adam, Adam Busatil. Hmm. Adam knew Mitch. Yes, at Murphy's. And Adam, since he started to work with me, knew we do a lot of festivals. Mm -hmm. And when I talked to him about St. Clair, I said to Adam, he goes, Adam, they need a festival in St. Clair. And he said he would talk to his buddy Mitch. Hmm. So that's how the, that's so how. So Mitch it, called you and said, Hey, yeah. Mitch called me, and the rest is history. And I said, I, he said, uh, how do we get a jazz festival? Seriously, that's how it works. And the next thing you know, I'm meeting with you and the mayor. Yes, Mayor Bill Jim Cedar. Jim Downey. Jim Downey. Uh, yeah. Annette Sturdy, eventually, uh, at the city. We had to have a sturdy person in the that's, office. That's right. And it was, uh, but that's how it happened. It's so cool. Uh, it it so really cool. is cool because the first one happened, I mean, you said, yeah, let's see what we can do. And literally three months later, we put together a jazz festival and it was a great success. I, the I, first never, time. I never saw anything move so quick. I, I didn't think yeah. it was going to happen. Yeah. After our first meeting, 
I, you remember there was a little bit of dialogue? Absolutely. And I kind of left there going, and you guys kept on talking about your festival, and I said, no, no, this is your festival, it's not mine. And I really wondered if it was going to happen. Mm -hmm. And to everybody's credit, including Jim Downey, yes. who called up and said he spoke with uh, one of the, Mr. Moore? Probably, yeah, Frank Moore. Frank mm -hmm. Moore? Frank Moore. And then he said there's a, there's a buzz going on about it. I was I was just thrilled by it. So. Um, we have a we have a town that really does support the arts, and so a lot of people came together that first year. Last year we had a little more time, and we got another good group together. Yeah. This year um, we have some phenomenal patrons of this event. Yeah. Um, Cargill Salt has yes. been a, a patron since the beginning. Um, the Community Foundation is a huge of patron Saint Clair County. of St. Clair County. I know their name. They have stepped up. We wouldn't have a festival if it wasn't for them. But in addition to that, DTE yes. and, well, there's just, I don't want to leave yeah. anybody out because there's so many. Yeah, um, the St. Clair big, Inn has already important. stepped up. The yeah. St. Clair Inn said, yes, we're not open yet, but we want to be a part of it. Waste management, mm -hmm. um, the chamber, I am uh, the representative for the St. Clair Chamber of Commerce, and we yeah, took this cool. on as well. Cool. Um, and then we have lots of local uh, businesses that said, yes, we yeah. want this to happen. And so it's happening again. Yeah. And the first year, did, what did we know? We, Remember I, I knew nothing. You? Everybody kept on asking me, how many people are going to be there? How many? I don't know how many people are going to be there. And my line was, which was true to form, mm -hmm. more than 500, less than 10,000. Yes. And, and that was true. And it was true. And the it first year, right out of the box, it was so successful. Although we did have rain. Uh, just a little at and the it, end. That's and, all I allowed. Well, but we lost our whole headliner. Yeah. So but in you spite know what? of that. I never heard anybody complain necessarily right. you know, about that because they'd had such a grand day. First of all. You mean not one person asked for the money back at a free festival? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> but in addition to that, as you well know, people will always complain even if they didn't pay a no, nickel. but they loved it. They the did. We have never had any complaints yeah. about that. Part of that is the setting. Tell us how you chose that setting. Well, I didn't choose it. Uh, uh, you know, I didn't come to town and build Palmer Park. No, you did not. But uh, but you had it, something in mind. I did. I did Park. because you know I, I do so many festivals. Right. And they're all on rivers and they're near lakes and they're in cities. You know, Jazz on the River, Elizabeth Park in Trenton, mm -hmm. right under the Detroit River. Mm -hmm. uh, river Raisin, right on the River Raisin. Uh, uh, Southfield, we're in that beautiful uh, city, right near the. So they all have great settings. Mm -hmm. Every single time someone bought me free food at the River Crab. <laughs> That's right, I've never paid to go to the River Crab. But every time I went there, I would pass your cool town. Right. And I would say, you got to do a festival there. Mm -hmm. That's really how it happened. It does lend itself you know? to that. And you I did choose so. one of the prettiest parts of that yeah. Palmer Park. Um, my favorite first year story is you were up there, and all of a sudden, two of our wonderful ships passed the f the perfectly. Ships passed. Perfectly behind and the, the stage. And the crowd stood up and gave the ships a standing ovation. That's right. I thought it was for me. It might have been a little bit. But you, you got to admit, where oh, it you, is a beautiful spot. Where do you it get is. that? Uh, it, you know? I, I tell everybody, remember? there is no place prettier on earth. And I broke into uh, Gordon Lightfoot's uh, Edmund Fitzgerald. Remember? <laughs> you don't remember that, do you? I remember the ships pass. I just, I, remember? <laughs> no, I did no, that. you did not do that. No, I didn't. Do that. No, you didn't do but that. But I should have. Next time. Gordon Lightfoot's. Next you know, time. We share a lot in common, Gordon and I. How? How We're is Canadians. that? Canadians. Oh, Canadians. Oh, that's right. Yes, because Gordon I don't know that everybody knows you're Canadian. So every time you come here, you have to come across. And that's quite an excursion sometimes. You know, I don't want to waste my ink on Gordon Lightfoot. That's not why I'm here. Because <laughs> there's other Canadians. But I'm a huge fan. <laughs> I, really, I love that guy. Do you? I really do. And I love Lake Freighters. Huh. I like so that there, you, take that. I like that you know so many of these people, which is why you become a real valuable asset to us. Because we don't know any of these people and can't reach out to, and to get them. Well, obviously, you don't know Harry Connick Jr. well enough. I don't know because Harry Connick. I'm waiting for you to get him I here. Harry, I knew Soupy Sales really but well. But talk about the people you are. Oh, I but loved Soupy. I had lunch with Soupy every day. Oh, sorry. I Tell who's too. coming this year. Well, let's start with this is the third year. This is the third year. And, and if, you, if you back up just a little bit and you consider in our little three years, all of these incredible artists that we've already had. Mm -hmm. Huge Groove who didn't perform. We did have Jeff Lord, but once before he's coming back with two special friends. Mm -hmm. uh, and you look at all those great La Larry Lee and back in the day, mm -hmm. sure, and he's still dancing to that he guy. He is, he is. And, and the list just goes on. <laughs> and is. then second year, American Idol winner, Ruben mm -hmm. Stutter. Mm -hmm. Even if you didn't, even if you and I didn't even enjoy the performance, just hanging out with Ruben was a lot of fun. Well, and I got to drive him around in yes. a cart, so yes. that was a lot of fun. It I had was. dinner with him. <laughs> I would have had dinner with him, but we were so busy that night, you know. Have you seen Ruben Stutter? I have. You should have dinner with him. <laughs> he has dinner, and then he has an after-dinner dinner. You know what? 
I found him to be a very nice young man, and I told him his mother should be proud man. of him. And you know what he said? My mother is always proud of me. He's I sweet. thought that was very nice. He ordered everything on the menu, but thank you, come again. Oh. <laughs> I'm out of jokes now. God, I hope that Ruben's not watching this. But imagine that we had all It's unlikely, of, but... Third year, yeah. crowds keep growing. They do. The PR gets bigger and bigger. It, you know, I've already started my season, as you know, mm -hmm. and everywhere we go now, is St. Clair back, is St. Clair back. That's I'm not exactly. making that up. And if we, oh, I'm getting my phone calls. And we've already. also accomplished a very big geographic question because we have convinced a lot of people in the Metro Detroit area that St. Clair is not St. Clair, Clair Shores. Shores. That's right. You know? That's right. More of my phone calls that first year were get back in your car and go 20 minutes more north on I-94. How sweet is that, though, Susan? So many people discover this. Because that's the magic I get out. Seriously. Mm -hmm. Elizabeth Park in Trenton is beautiful. Nobody knew about it. Mm -hmm. I remember when I started a festival in Trenton, they said, you're going to do jazz in Trenton? Same thing with St. Clair. They mm -hmm. said, where is it? Why are you there? And the minute they come and check it out, hang out in your beautiful town, mm -hmm. You know, go to the Voyager, mm -hmm. see the pictures of the lake freighter that almost ran right into the that's Voyager. That's right, that's right. And seriously, and, magic. And we, magic. and that's kind of the point. We know that that day is an introduction to a lot of people, it and is. then they come back. And of course, that's what we want. We want people to come yeah, back to yeah. us, and we want to share yeah. the beauty of our little town, and uh, also see this music. And for our locals, we want our locals to have an opportunity yeah. for free to yeah. see a music that they might not know well, they really like. Well, you always want to tell people that. Yes, yeah, it's, it's very free. And, and then once there, we've got all kinds of good food that's right close and local, but also there's other places they can walk. You even have a the, Tim Hortons. We do. Do you know what that means to a Canadian? Canadians, yes. You have no idea. <laughs> that's, that's one of the our only imports. The only missing is uh, hockey pucks. That's hockey our imports. Sticks. Yes, that's right. Hockey, uh, Tim Hortons? Yes, that's right. You guys all know who Tim Hortons was, right? Right. You all knew, right? You, all know. you know, right? He was I a hockey player. Yes. I, you told me in a that. car accident. Yeah, you told me that. Okay, I'm not here to talk about Tim Hortons. <laughs> but I will say, in speaking with Dan, you know, I spoke with Dan yes. Lockwood. Mm -hmm. And when you start to talk about this and he starts filling me in, I mean, seriously, when you. Oh, start, he knows everything. But seriously, Marine City, the theater that's mm -hmm. coming here, I, and I kept on making my comparisons to Stratford, Ontario, right. where some farmer decided to do world class theater and look right. what's happening. And then Niagara on the Lake. You ever been yes. to the Shaw Festival? Absolutely. I see this whole region culturally being. We do too. Being the same. Um, there are a lot of people that are, that's their vision for this community right, right. and that it will run from Marine City up to Port Huron and yeah. that this will be a destination for everybody. And in the middle of that will be our jazz festival. So Just give me free rooms at the St. Clair Inn for the rest of my life. That's all I want. I'll, I'll send this and make sure he Is sees that. Is that the guy watching this? Jeff? I'll, I'll send it to him by email, make sure, because I want one too. <laughs> that's good. No, honestly, I am thrilled. Yeah. And you know the lineup? Um, I do. Joey Somerville is coming in from Atlanta, amazing trumpet player. Uh, you're going to love Urban Jazz Coalition. They're from Columbus, Ohio. And they, they already have fan bases. Their mm -hmm. friends are coming. Uh, they're coming in from Columbus, Ohio. Lindsay Webster is one of the hottest singers in the country right now. She's amazing. Uh, she lives in New York. She's coming in. Uh, you got a Serbian flute player coming in. Yes, Although he's yes. Canadian, he's coming all the way in. Yes, I heard he was Canadian. And, and he's he's an actually import. from Montenegro. Oh. Yeah. One of the... One of the other countries that your president has insulted in recent memory, <laughs> the Montenegrins. Why would he do that? Don't nice take people. it to heart. Don't take it to nice heart. People. Did you see him push our king aside you, at that one meeting? You know what? You're in good company, okay. so don't worry about it. And then Jeff Lorber is coming back. Since he was here a couple years ago, he has won a Grammy. Mm -hmm. And he's bringing uh, Paul Jackson Jr. with him, one of the great guitar players in America. He plays on American Idol. He makes his own records brilliant guitar player, Everett Harp, who aside from being an amazing saxophone player, Everett Harp is a bodybuilder. Oh. No, seriously, he comes in like this. I'm, I'm not making Will that I up. be his security? No, no. <laughs> At one point in the middle of his show, he throws protein shakes out to the crowd. Ah. I made cool. that up because, because we're in a grocery store. Yeah. That's right. So, you know, people won't notice that we're in a grocery store. It's just backup, you know. Yeah, well, <laughs> What are you talking about? I got a watermelon in yeah, front of me? Yeah, don't look at that. What do you got? You got to be kidding me. You're, this That's is, your co-host. You really want to live in St. Clair, so this is where you would shop. Who is so. that guy right there? I, Remember Wilson? Remember that movie yes. with Tom Hanks? Remember I have Wilson? no idea what that's doing there. Yeah. That's, but that's Melonhead. We're going to let I'm you sorry. do a much longer interview with um, Paul Dingaman. This wasn't long enough? <laughs> no, this was just for fun. He's Pat, got questions. Pat, you... I'm telling you guys are great with this. You know, when people come and they see something that big, seriously, 
and they, they probably go home and think like that 400 people are working on this. Uh, and you know what a small group we have. It is. It's a nice and, small group. And, and it works so cool. We're going to make, make it a little bigger. But. Mark my words, if we stick to, I'm not making this up, I'm just on a pitch, everybody. In five years and then 10 years, it's going to be spectacular. Seriously, because I see it at the other places. I, I, you know, I think that's what people are expecting. Absolutely. And, and Alexander, we give you credit for Don't. having a vision. Uh, that you could attach to our little yeah. town because so that really is one of the really few cities nice. in America where I can get credit. <laughs> we'll we'll let you have I'm some of the credit. Running out of material. <laughs> we'll Pat, let, thank you so much. You no, know this is going to be great. I do know it's going to be. I can't wait. We need to tell wait. them how to how to find out about it. Or yes. Is if, there a website? Yeah, there is a website. You can uh, St. Clair Chamber, uh, dot com. Uh, we'll have something on there, but really, what you need to do is just call me, and my, I don't have my glasses. You're going to ask Melon had any questions? As, 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 wait, wait. I don't have my glasses. Say the number. Oh, there's a phone number You're not there? helping. Here, tell me what the number is to my office right there. I don't have any glasses. I can't. Oh, good God. <laughs> Call me at my office, 810-329-2962, or Annette at the city, 810-329-7121. And we can help you with any of your questions that you might have. But, um, can most... we get a laser eye surgeon as a, yes. as a sponsor for next year? I don't know. So I don't want to wear my... our eyes done? <laughs> that would be so cool. Mm. You know? As long as one of us has a pair of glasses, we're all set. So... Thank you so much for joining us. Well, that was a fun interview with Alexander Zanchek. And as you heard in that interview, it's uh, August the 18th, the Saturday, all day long in uh, beautiful Palmer Park along the St. Clair River, uh, the free, absolutely, St. Clair Jazz Festival. So uh, make your, mark your calendar. Make sure you come to that. That's about it for this edition of the uh, Focus Program. Thanks very much for tuning in. Till next time, I'm Paul Dingerman. See you soon. Thanks for watching Focus with Paul Dingaman. Focus is produced at the CTV Community Television Studios in St. Clair. For over 20 years, CTV has captured the moments that matter to our community.